The Voice Chameleon, lending a voice to those whom demand to be heard. Hey, what's up, guys? D back with uh, Tuesday Tips. Sorry for being a little late today. Uh, we've been getting some work done on the house with our roof and our ceiling, and it's just kind of tied a lot of things up the last couple days. But I wanted to make sure I made time to get this out here at some point today, this Tuesday, February 12th, 2019. Uh, continuing on, for those who remember last week, I told you for the four weeks, the four Tuesdays in February, rather, that I'd be telling you some of the harsh truths about life as a VOA. Whereas a lot of people tell you all the wonderful stuff, which is great, but if you're going to get into this, you need to understand that there's an ugly, tough side to it, uh, like any business. And again, that's the key word. It's business. This is a business. You must run it as such. If you're not comfortable with that, then perhaps you should look at something else to do. Because if you can't put in the time, put in the effort as you would in any other business, then this probably isn't the path for you. Think about it this way. There's a lot of folks out there who I talk to are like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I was just thinking about just doing this part-time. Like, there's no such thing as part-time. If you're well-established, you can scale back and do it part-time. But that's for people who are well-established, okay? It takes years to get to that point, though. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, treat this as a business. Think about it this way. If you opened a grocery store, right, put in all the money, all the time, all the effort to open this business, and you were only open, though, from, you know, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., you'd probably lose out to your competition real quick, and you would go under and when people would say, why the hell are you only open from 7 to 10? You'd say, well, because I have a day job. Okay, well, if you can manage your day job and do this, great. There are people that do that. But availability is everything in this business, too. Because we live in a very on-demand world here in 2019, right? Everything's on demand. Guys, there's thousands of voice talents out there with the experience, with the equipment, that have had the coaching, that have had everything they need to get them to where they are. So if you're not available, the client's going to find somebody who is. Now it's different if you have this you know, specific relationship with the client and you, know, uh, you do a certain thing that only you can do or whatever, things like that. I'm not telling you down the road your clients are going to bail on you because you were unavailable because you were sick or something or whatever. I'm just telling you like early on, you need to be available, you know, um, because of people you're not because you say oh i didn't get your email till 8 p.m because i was working my day job and then came home and did the stuff with my family and had dinner but now i'm available for you chances are at that point they've already decided to go with somebody else so it's hard to hack it if you're just kind of half in half out so yeah don't half ass it check your ego at the door all right so stop me if you've heard this one before and i think for any of my fellow voas out there I know you've heard this more times than you'd like. You're talking to somebody, you tell them what you do, or it's somebody you know personally, and it just comes up in conversation and say, you know what, people tell me all the time I've got a great voice. I think I should get into that. Uh, I hear that often from people. I've probably said that to people in the past before I started doing this, and I apologize to anyone I ever did say that to because it's freaking insulting. You're basically telling somebody that's doing this for a living, that's worked their tail off to get to where they are, that you could just dive in and do what they do. You wouldn't say that to somebody else. I wouldn't go up to a brain surgeon and be like, hey, yeah, uh, I think I want to be a brain surgeon because I've got a steady hand and I was really good at operation as a kid. No, it's freaking insulting. So be a little bit more cautious the way you tread when you're seeking out stuff from other voice talents, man, because uh, personal story, my first VO coach experience, uh, I thought about doing this a while back, and I was actually pretty happy with my broadcast career, but I felt the things coincided, so I thought, hey, why not make a little extra money by doing voiceover on the side? And I checked in, you know, did my research and talked to a couple people over the phone who were coaches. Didn't like what most of them had to say because I felt like they were just trying to sell me on something um, and told me all the good stuff. And I'm like, where's the catch, you know? 
but I talked to this one coach who's very respected in the industry and has been doing this for a long time, and he said, uh, here's what you need to do, blah, blah, and I was like, well, you know, I've been doing radio and TV stuff for a long time, and I've done all these commercials, and blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Immediately, I turned this guy off, right? Because I came out like, let's call a spade a spade. I came off as a cocky prick. And that's really the truth, because I thought, I wasn't trying to be cocky, but in my head, I thought something different about what voiceover was. So I felt that I would be good at it because of my broadcast experience and things like that. Now, granted, some of that stuff comes into play and can be handy, mainly for me in the audio production side of things, but overall, you can't come at it like that. You can't talk to people like that. So I basically initially turned this guy off, and then I called back a couple days later, and because I realized the error of my ways, I understood now why he was so turned off by me and irritated by me. So I called him back, and I apologized, and I said, look, I think I just completely misunderstand what this business is. So if you give me a second chance of your time, I'd really like to learn a little bit more. So I think he took uh, me calling him back and being honest about things very well. He respected that and appreciated that. And so he gave me a lot of his time at no charge because he saw the passion in me. He just knew I needed to kind of get uh, re-educated on the subject, which he did. And what it really came down to, he said, you know, D, are you willing to do this, this, and this, and this, and this? And I said, no, not right now, I'm not. He said, okay, well then, let's just stay in touch, and if you decide you're ready, then we'll move forward. Well, we stayed in touch. He still gave me a lot of good advice that, again, would have probably cost me quite a bit <laughs> had I been doing it formally with him, but uh, it really gave me some perspective, and so... Down the road, when I decided to finally go ahead and do this, it made a huge difference for me. So, what I want to tell you guys really is just be humble, check your ego at the door, and be willing to work and work and bust your ass and listen to people. Again, we live in this crazy on demand world, so our attention spans are a little shorter nowadays, and our brains are going all the time. So, the best thing to do is take a deep breath. And just listen to somebody else and soak in what they got to say. doesn't have to be me. Again, I'm just a guy on a journey, and I try to share some of the experiences I've had with you in hopes that you might get something out of it. But that's it for this week, so I'll do part three of the harsh truths of VO uh, coming up next week. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out another video from The Voice Chameleon. I'm D. Alvis, and if you'd like to learn more about how I can help you, head on over to thevoicechameleon.com.